a slight advantage on their previous head-to-head -head encounters, having won two of the previous meetings. So for Sonidwi Kuncharo, 24 years of age, born in Surabaya. His opponent, Chen Jin, a couple of years younger, but a little taller. He's 1 meter 83, whereas the Indonesian 175. Chen Jin, born in Hubei province. And the number four seed, the number four ranked player up in the, in the world, up against the number five seed and the number five ranked player in the world. Just an indication of the quality of this. And as you can see, well, in the semi-finals, three players from China. And what a tremendous match that was between Bao Chun-Lai and Sonny Dui Kunshuro. An hour and one minute for the Indonesian to win through 21-15 in the deciding game. They're the Indonesian coach. Now, as far as the Chinese player is concerned, all four of his matches... Previous matches have been won in two straight games. He hasn't played against a seeded player so far. Obviously, his opponent today in the final is seeded. And three of his opponents have been Chinese, as we're looking at his coach, Charles Ranger, former world champion at the men's singles, won that title in Birmingham, England, in 2003. And it's been quite noticeable how Charles Ranger has been put in charge of a number of the players, including women's doubles, so he's not confined just to one discipline that he's helping, but seems to be a really encouraging force amongst the up-and-coming talent. Mikkel Olsen of Sweden, our umpire for this men's singles final, and Wei Jiangju our service judge from China. Reigning All England champion Chen Jin. Slight controversy about that final when he was up against Lin Dan, his teammate. Ladies and gentlemen, on the right, Solid V Conjuro, Indonesia. On the left, Chen Yin, China. Solid to serve. Level, Black. So this men's singles final. Sonny Dui Conchoro, the Indonesian number five seed nearest to us with the white shirt, Chen Jin. There he is, the Olympic bronze medalist with the red shirt, the far side of the court as we look down. That's a perfect smash from the Indonesian. And of course, Chen Jin didn't go to the Japan Open last week, whereas this man did. He won the title. And that means that this is his 10th match in 12 days. And I just wonder, perhaps, if finally that's going to take its toll. I did say that yesterday in his semi-final against Bao Chun Lai, but showed remarkable resilience to come through in three games. found the line. Just five career titles for this young man from China. That's senior titles. Of course, he was the first and only man to win the Junior World Championships two consecutive occasions. And that, of course, was in the days when the World Championships, World Junior Championships, were only played once every two years. A biannual event. Now staged every year. Oh. 
Oh, that's clever. Very clever play Three, from Conchoro. Just guiding the shuttle into the open space, very aware of where his opponent was on court. Shenzhen, very much a worker on court. Getting advice from Charles Ranzer. Yeah, in my opinion, this man doesn't seem to have the same dynamic style of the Olympic champion, Lin Dan. Tends to want to wear down his opponents, chasing every shuttle. Doesn't possess so many winning shots. Oh, it's called wide. And just a little question mark from Conchoro to the service judge. Well, looking at that again, not surprised that he did question that. Having played the net shot, was backing off, looking for the lift. And Chen Jin just playing the lovely little net shot in response. Oh, yes, that's so good. He's a very strong man, is Sonny Dui Kunchoro, generating power on that defensive shot. Well, you know, it was a jolly good lift off that tight spinning net shot. Chen Jin doing awfully well to get the shuttle as deep as he did. But the smash from the Indonesian was well angled, coupled with the power. That's a super shot. Part of the deception created by the fact that he was addressing the shuttle early. Racket arm outstretched. Then had the options. I remember during the early stages he played a lovely little net shot. So his opponent waiting for that, looking for that. That's nice too. point deficit has been closed. 
just cutting the strings of his racket there and the reason that a player does that once they've broken one of the string the tension is such that the racket head gets a little bit distorted if one of the strings has gone and therefore to relieve the tension and not distort and therefore potentially crack the racket head the players snip all the strings it's not an act of destruction let me assure you of that there's very good reason Shuffle deflected by hitting the net cord. Eight, seven. Yeah, good judgment. Let it drop long. And that greeted with almost silence from the crowd here in Changzhou. judgment once again from the Indonesian watched it all the way watching watching yep right decision three-point margin opened up once again silver medalist of course the world championships last year in Kuala Lumpur Sonny Dwi Conchoro missed out to Lin Dan in the final but he's in a good position in this final here at the China Masters four point advantage once again being gifted the point by an error from Chen Jin 11-7 And really the only question mark in my mind is whether all the badminton that he's played over the last 20 seconds, 20 12 days whether that's going to suddenly have an effect on this man from Indonesia Another one drifts long of that back line. And now a five point advantage for the Indonesian. And the crowd here are beginning to show signs of frustration that their man is not in the driving seat. And the run of five points has come to an end. time again I just get amazed by how these players can control the shuttle and how many they get back their retrieving ability is just extraordinary that's pushed long as well how many is that is that four or five hit long of that back line
more strings gone in the racket of the Indonesian. Once again, he'll get out the scissors and give that a quick snip. Yep, there he goes. test the new racket. Ten, Common courtesy amongst the players. And in all honesty, the only difference between these two players at the moment, because we're not actually seeing that many winning shots. Most rallies are ending with an error from one or other of the players. And so far, it's Chen Jin who's been making more of the unforced errors, especially hitting long of that back line. a very good way to stop yourself hitting out the back of the court is to hit the shuttle down success and failure are tiny. Night Shuffle hitting the top of the tape, not going over. Oh, that's tremendous. And from that moment when I said we weren't seeing many winners, the players have turned it on finding the line so too does that well he'd been struggling in the early stages to make his judgments on those clears he was hitting far too many long of that back line that time it was perfect that's wide And I think it's telling that Sonny Dewey Conchuro has asked for a towel down timeout. His legs surely must be feeling the exertions of the last 16, 12 days. His 10th match in 12 days at this sort of level. That's a lot to ask. Interesting also that he's removed the back support. Perhaps now fully warmed up. Oh, 
Oh, great aggression. Wonderful speed coming forward. Quality net exchange. And it was interesting as soon as that rally was over, Chen Jin looking up towards the giant screen here in this magnificent Olympic complex. This arena, absolutely superb. Only built a year ago. To me, like a very hard shot indeed, and in fact, the body language of Kunchoro after that rally. This is worrying signs if you're an Indonesian fan. Chen Jin is back level. He has worked his opponent. He's stuck to his task. Oh, that. Oh my goodness, that's called wide. Well, no overall from the umpire. And the umpire saying, can't see from my position, Mikkel Olsen of Sweden. Let's have a look at that. My instinct was that it was good. And by the look of that, I think perhaps my instinct was right. From my opinion, I can't see it, because the player is in the way. But he can see it, but he didn't see it. So? Well, the umpire is correct there, and unlike in the mixed doubles final, the umpire having the courtesy to answer the player's question. That's good umpiring. Oh, that was going out. And that is a tired, tired looking shot from Punchoro. Well, I said right at the start of this final that Chen Jin his style of play is to really work his opponent and work the Indonesian he has done so far. And the Indonesian is showing signs that this is one match too far in 12 days of competition. Five matches last week to win the title in Japan. His fifth match this week here in China. But one thing is for sure, Sonny Dui Kunchora will not give up on this opening game, not yet. It's all far too close to call. There's only one point in it.
now it's gone wide. It's level once again. Uh, no question about that. And Chen Jin knows it. New racket for Sonny Dwink and Shoro. No, in fact, doesn't like the newly strung racket. Reverts back to the previous one he was using. It's 19 all first game. Now it's 2019. 20. And as the umpire confirms, it is game point to the Indonesian. And just a moment ago when he was 17-19 down, I felt that he was looking so fatigued. I thought that was worrying, but my goodness, if ever there's a fighter, this man is it. Stolen the opening game as Sonny Dwi Kunchuro. I, for one, thought the signs were not good for the winner from last week at the Super Series event in Japan. I thought that all this badminton was catching up with him. But what a remarkable player he is. He's stolen the opening game 21-19. In 24 minutes. Too far away. Please, if I if I'm looking at you like this. Well, very, very interesting in that two-minute timeout. The umpire from Sweden, Mikkel Lawson, just having a word with his service judge and saying, look, please, if I look at you, if you've been able to see that there's been an incorrect line call, please indicate to me. 20 seconds. 20 seconds. Well... That is interesting. And once again... I praise the umpire for uh, good umpiring decisions and a good control of the match. Second game, level, play. So, the big question, has Sonny Dwi got enough left in those tired legs of his to close out this final and take his third consecutive Super Series tournament title. Of course, he won the Indonesian Open, which was the last Super Series event before the Beijing Olympics. He then won Japan last week, which was the first Super Series after the Olympics. And here we are a week later in China, the China Masters. And he's a game up in the final. What a remarkable run it would be. That's wide. Two, love. long as well and it's been a very good start by the Indonesian my goodness how wrong I was when I made that statement at 17-19 down 
in that opening game from Sonny Dweek and Choro and I said that he was looking very tired and I thought it was worrying signs well all credit to this man closed out the opening game four straight points to close out that opening game and now another three at seven straight points Just wondering about the psychological impact on Chen Jin, having probably thought that he had done enough in that opening game to close it out. He will be kicking himself that he didn't. He's lost nine straight points now as the Olympic bronze medalist. The bronze medalist from Athens, Sonny Dui Conchoro, leading five love in this second game against the bronze medalist from Beijing. Oh, remarkable defence. Just a little flick across court. Shuttle has actually gone past him when he played that block. But he'll be very relieved that that run of nine straight points from the Indonesian to close out that opening game and then go to five love in this second. And that's come to an end. And it's absolutely imperative, as far as Chen Jin is concerned, that he doesn't allow his opponent to get too far in front in this second game. He's got to stay with him. Big effort required right now. Well, this time it was Chen Jin that was left standing, didn't react, wasn't able to push off from that base position. Well, I've been talking the whole way through this contest about whether Sonny Dui has got the power and the stamina in the legs after playing last week and this his opponent of course gave the, China, the uh, Japan Open a miss Seven, two. but by the looks of things on that previous rally, not this one it's the Chinese player that's struggling with the power in the legs have to say though the body language of Sonny Dui Kunchiro at the end of that rally Seven, two. Looked to be struggling a little bit, and he's saying to the umpire, Look, the court attendant hasn't mopped the perspiration properly. Seven, two. Missed it. And that's so contrary to his normal style where he just steadily works and works his opponent. There going for the outright winner, going for the line and missing.
a good aggressive play and that's the sort of rally that will do his confidence the world of good up the pace the last couple of rallies has changed in reaction from Sonny Dwee at the end of that rally a huge squeal of delight and normally it doesn't give much indication of his emotions, what he's feeling usually very contained emotionally landed in just caught the outside edge of the line was just wide Marvellous badminton. I'm not going to change my head. Okay? Please be ready. Diving headlong. Didn't just got it, get it back. He got it back with interest. And a big smile from Sonny Dui Conchoro. And a shake of the head from his opponent. It's 11-6 in the second game. Five point advantage in this second game, having won the first for the Indonesian Sonny Dwi Conchoro. This is an important rally. Both players know it. Oh, goodness. And the psychological advantage and the momentum is most definitely with the Indonesian now. Well, so much for my prediction. That's 17-19 down in that opening game that Sonny Dwee was looking as if perhaps he was a spent force. Certainly not the case. Plays a perfect net shot. Okay, 
who now, in total contrast, looks to me as if Chen Jin is running out of ideas. Yeah, trying to play the outright winner, trying to go for the net, go for the winning shots, hitting the line. And that's so contrary to his normal style of play. And Sharp turns up. He's looking concerned as well. And so he should. This a nine point advantage. Six straight points. Well, unless Chen Jin makes a move pretty soon, it's just going to be too late. Oh, well, it would have gone long with that back line, but it hit the Indonesian and just watch Sonny Dwi at the end of this rally immediately turns and points and says yes it would have gone long but couldn't get out of the way That's going wide, so for the dive this time to the backhand side from the Indonesian. Goodness gracious. It's not just the dive, it's how quickly he gets up and recovers. Court attendant required to come on and perspiration that's okay, thank you. making the shirt so sodden left on the court surface when the player dives and it really does need a jolly good mop to clear that up. Okay. Yes. Okay. No, Sonny Dwee wanted the shuffle Dive's changed. Dwee. Chen Jin saying no, the umpire saying the shuffle is fine. So still a six point deficit though. No, it's wide, he's missed it. I just had the feeling that Chen Jin needed a couple more points to really start to put the Indonesian under pressure. Because I sense that the Indonesian now is feeling that he's really within touching distance and that psychologically gives a boost and therefore physically gives a boost. But Chen Jin absolutely determined not allowing 10, his opponent to progress any further. Not at the moment. Continue. Rumpar's been very strict today about players wasting time. Getting them to play on. That, of course, is officially the rule. Play will be continuous apart from the official timeouts, the mid game intervals, and in between games. It's a 
simple put away in the end. Psychologically, that rally could have a huge impact on this match. Sonny Dwee had two opportunities to put the shuttle away, but the defence of Chen Jin was remarkable. And once again, a dispute between the two players as to whether the shuttle needs to be changed or not. 12-16. Chen Jin has won seven of the last eight points. saying that if Chen Jin, who's got the serve, doesn't want to change the shuttle, then it shouldn't be. I think we ought to revert back to whether the shuttle is fit for play or not. Now what will be interesting is to see whether Sonny Dui now wants to change the shuttle, because I'm sure the umpire will allow him to now that he's got the serve. He's certainly allowed to towel down. Umpire inviting Chen Jin to also towel down. Well, if Sonny Dui doesn't change the shuttle, then it's an indication that him wanting to change it previously was a tactical ploy. Rather than, oh no, he does want to change it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he really did believe that the shuttle wasn't fit for play. Well, having praised the umpire earlier on, there, I'm disappointed in him because Sonny Dwee had been asking for three rallies to change that shuttle. It was obvious the Indonesian wasn't happy with it. He then asks, and at that stage, Chen Jin said, yes, that was fine. If both the players agree, why not on earth don't you just let them change the shuttle? Yeah, once again, that's a very tired-looking shot. Just three points the deficit now. Can the Indonesian hang on long enough to close out this match in two straight games? Once again, looking very, very tired to me. Superb. Just inside the line. Eighteen, fourteen.
just two points away from his second title in two weeks, Sonny Dwi Kunchoro of Indonesia. Yeah, but good aggression from Chen Jin. While he weathered the storm, did Sonny Dwi Conchoro. He was under severe pressure in that rally. And then just a little fast drop, finishing it off. And he now has five match points. One match point well saved by Chen Jin. Still another four opportunities for the Indonesian. Oh, he's missed it. Well, the umpire not even looking at the shuttle, just taking Chen Jin's word for it that the shuttle was okay, despite the fact the Indonesian wants it changed. Yeah. And the Indonesian saying to the umpire, but look, there's a broken feather. And the umpire finally having a look at the shuttle and agreeing, even though Chen Jin didn't want it changed now, really has become a feature of badminton nowadays and a feature that I have to say I really don't like the disagreement amongst the players about whether to change shuttles or not. Anyway, that point aside, three match points have been saved, another two remain. this time the Indonesian converts what a remarkable run of super series success he has had his second title in two weeks his third consecutive super series title the Indonesian Open the Japan Open last week and now the China Masters here in Changzhou my goodness, didn't the Indonesian need to win that in two straight games because he is exhausted. His 10th match in 12 days, his 10th win in 12 days and his second Super Series title in two weeks. Remarkable. The moment of victory sinks down low the elation and rightly so
terrific match in 51 minutes 21-19, 21-18 the scoreline and Sonny Dui Conchoro takes his third title of the year his third Super Series tournament victory of the year prize presentation for the men's singles coming up after we enjoy the highlights from this terrific men's singles final So both finalists ready for the prize presentation. Min Chin, the vice mayor of Changzhou. And Dong Jiping, director of Zenith for the sponsors. Will be the present presentation party. Jin. Beaten in today's final by a man who has had a remarkable run in Super Series competitions. Championships back in 2000 when he was only 16 years of age. Then, of course, the bronze medal in Athens in 2004 at the Olympic Games. And here he is, really has got to be considered the most informed player in world badminton at the moment. So they leave the winner's podium. Just one more final to come here from Changzhou. And it's men's doubles. World and Olympic champions Kido and Sidi Yuan up against the Chinese Sun Junjie and Zhu Chen. That coming up 